Hi, my name is Rahul Pathakar, and today I'm going to show you how to design QPCR and QRTPCR primers that will work every time using simple software. Let's get into it. QPCR needs to be efficient. And in order to get really efficient PCR reactions, software will help you pick primers that you can't just pick by eye and manually. For example, here's an, uh, um, a pair of primers that are actually not very good. And you can see that software can show us that these primers form a lot of base pairs with one another. And they actually have a favorable thermodynamics for this dimer to form. These are other dimers that could also form. So software is really good at looking at all possible base pairing combinations and looking at how well your primers will anneal to a template and how easy that um, uh, Amplicon will be able to be generated. There's lots of programs that you can use to design primers. I'm going to show you a quite old program called Perl Primer. Uh, not very much has changed in designing primers over the last couple decades. So Perl Primer is really actually a very nice program for using this because it's quite simple to use. So if we open up Perl Primer and we want to design uh, real-time qPCR primers or RT QPCR primers. We can go to this real-time PCR tab in Perl Primer. And then we're going to paste in our genomic sequence and our mRNA sequence. I have those here already. And the reason you're going to have both of these sequences is that for QRT-PCR, it's desirable to amplify only the messenger RNA, only um, have messenger RNA be the only real template or cDNA made from that messenger RNA. And so this program will actually allow you to design at least one of your two primers that will span an exon junction. Therefore, that primer really only binds to cDNA and not to genomic DNA. I'll show you more about that here in a second. So now that we've pasted in our sequences, there's a bunch of parameters here. Are, are they relatively simple? Um, you could probably leave all of these as the default um, settings. That would be fine. Um, I often might change this to 450 base pairs to just make amplicons a little bit bigger. When you're using Cyber Green or Eva Green, Eva Green is the better of the two. Um, you know, intercalating dye, um, qPCR. A little bigger amplicons can actually make more signal with an intercalating dye like Eva Green or Cyber Green. Other options here that you could play with a little bit is you could have a primer TM as low as 55 degrees. I wouldn't really go lower than 55 degrees if you want to have specific amplification. You could change the primer length. This could be as little as 18 primers, I mean 18 um, base pair length. Leaving the, G, um, the GC um, content and the GC clamp boxes checked is probably desirable. And if you're doing QRT-PCR, you definitely want to have this box checked um, because this will ensure that you're amplifying from cDNA rather than genomic DNA. Um, this is just a parameter for um, that goes along with this spanning. Um, anyway, let's click Find Primers. And we get a dialog that pops up. Don't worry about this. It's going to calculate all possible primers. Um, so it's going to find much more primers than you could find by hand. And if you pick the best ones on the list, which are already sorted, um, they're real. They're going to work every time. There we go. We have all the primers. So let's let's get that. Let's make that full screen. And so what you see is that they're already sorted in terms of um, their extensible dimer and their full dimer. So it, the program is automatically picking out things that have low value, like um, not favorable values here. The more negative a value is thermodynamically, that just happens automatically. So a negative value happens automatically. A positive value needs energy to go in to form that complex. And so when I click this one, you'll notice that on this diagram down below, it shows me where the two primers are. 
and you'll notice that one of the two primers right here spans two exons. And so this primer wouldn't do a great job of binding to genomic DNA because half of it is in one place of the genomic DNA and another half is in another part of the genomic DNA. But when you remove that intron right there, then these DNAs are next to one another. And so that's why this is good for QRT-PCR. If we click this, click our first one on the list, you'll see the um, you'll see its character for you'll see further characteristics like um, its TM and everything that you could see on the previous page. But you'll also see the possible um, extensible dimers. Extensible dimers are where um, the three prime end of the primer um, binds to another, either itself or the other primer and therefore can elongate. And non-expensable dimers are the opposite. Um, so here the three prime end is actually not base pairing with it. So the G and the A don't base pair. And so this is not likely to extend. Um, and this is an example, the opposite example. And so you can't actually make DNA in this direction. So anyway, you see there's no extensible dimers and the, the, um, and the non-extensible dimers don't have a very favor favorable thermodynamics for forming. And so these could be very good combination of primers to use. The next thing we have to do is we need to blast our primers. We need to blast them against whatever genome we're working with to see whether these primers are somewhat unique or completely unique in the genome. We don't want to pick a primer that has many places to bind in the genome. I'll take this first primer here, and, and this is from Arabidopsis. Um, so I'm going to go over to Tear to blast it. You can go to wherever, whatever is your best resource for blasting your particular organism. I'm going to put this on um, transcripts. I'm going to paste in this primer, and I'm going to run blast. Now you can see the blast results here. And you see that we have a perfect match to the gene that I started with, AGL15. Um, that's fine. But unfortunately, we actually have a perfect match for some other things on another chromosome. And so this may not be the best, the best primer to pick. We'll go back to Pearl Primer and pick, pick the second one on the list here. And it's also very similar in that it doesn't form extensible dimers. Copy that. And here you can see that this primer is much better. So it only binds to HL15, as you can see here. These are just, these are two different. Um, splice variants of AGL15. The next best one does not does not match perfectly. And you can see here that we get um, 16 out of, of 17 base pairs for that. So that would be a great primer. And let's go ahead and blast the other one and see how that looks. At least one of these two should be should be specific. And you can see here again that the only perfect match is with, with AGL15 again. And so this, this second, this second primer pair would actually be our desired primer pair to use. And these are almost virtually guaranteed to give you very nice results with qPCR. Now, if you wanted to do qPCR and not qRT-PCR, you wanted to do qPCR on just plain old DNA, you would do exactly the same thing, except don't come to this real-time tab. You can just go to standard PCR and um, paste in your sequence and then run the same the same basic thing without worrying about whether your primer crosses a splice junction. Um, it's highly desirable to design your primers with a program. And I design even sequencing primers with a program because they tend to give better results. Now, what I've showed you is for intercalating di um, qPCR. If you wanted to design probes um, 
for specific assays like TACMAN or something like that, um, I use Primer 3 to design those. I'm not going to cover that today. If you are interested in that, um, leave me a comment and I'll, I'll, um, and if there's interest, I'll make the video. Now, if you're interested in making your own qPCR mix, I have figured out how to make a mix that performs better than the BioRed, ABI, or Kyogen mixes that I've tried. It gives a few CT better, and it really gives a clean, clean, nice result. And the best part of all is it's dirt cheap. It only costs a few cents, maybe I think something like five cents per reaction. You want to see that? Um, I have that published in my 2015 paper. Um, see that here? It's in the in the materials and methods. You could just use that mix. That mix is a fantastic mix. If you're interested in other tips like this for doing lab work, you might want to come over to my website here, pathicar.com. I have a lot of different tutorial videos and a lot of print protocols. Um, that you can just simply download here. I'll leave links to this website and links to Pearl Primer down in the description below. Thanks for watching, and you might want to check out these videos next.